Okay. Uh, if you watched the last two videos, so uh, you should know how to get all the stuff installed, and you should know how to basically set up your geometry uh, to be prepared for energy modeling. Um, now, in this video, I'm going to show you like how you can send this geometry uh, for energy modeling. Uh, something that I should mention here is uh, I, I talk about this especially because I know many people start using Dynamo are, are coming from Grasshopper background. And in Grasshopper, what happens is uh, when, when you make the changes parametrically, your original object is, is different from the, from the other objects coming from the next component in Grasshopper. But here in Revit, you are dealing with uh, real Revit objects, and there is only one instance of that object, which means if you have this family instance, uh, this element, which refers to that box that we have, and then you make changes to it, like all the changes that we made, these changes will be applied to this mass. So the output of this mass family instance is actually this, is what is already changed which is the same as the input here, right? I want to say you, you're dealing with a unique geometry or data or B model. It's, it's not like copies of the model everywhere. It's important to understand because now when we want to export this model for energy modeling, you see there is no output of your, your mass family here because the way it works is basically, okay, I made some changes, I get some stuff, I use this as set parameter. Do you remember that uh, we have that set energy parameters that we ran and then we just, we just moved it? And it was still, you know, it was still there, effective for us. Here is kind of the same, it's not exactly the same, but the thing is like, so okay, you, you make all the changes to mass here, and from here, you can use the mass and export it. This mass already has all these changes applied. I hope this thing makes sense to you. Like it, because it's a totally different concept. Uh, I have seen people moving from Grasshopper to Dynamo have this issue of like, they can't understand why this is the same thing and where is the copy of this without changes. There is no such a thing. There is only a single, single mass family here. Okay. So saying all that, now I want to export uh, this model to a GBXML file. As I said, the, the process is you create your energy model, you export the GBXML file, uh, and then you send it to GBS Green Building Studio. And hopefully GBS Green Building Studio and GBXML, which is Green Building XML. I'm not getting you confused when I'm using them. So, okay. I prepared my energy model. I'm done with this. I'm done with energy setting. Now I want to run my analysis. Let's check what we have in run analysis. In run analysis, you have export mass to GBXML, export zone to GBXML. <coughs> you have create new project, and then you have run energy analysis. Uh, so the best order that we can think about is actually totally reversed than what we have here. Is okay. Let's first export it them to GBXML. Then when I have a GBXML, I need to create a new project. And then when I create my new project, I can run energy analysis on under that project. So let's first create my GBXML. How do you do that? Uh, you just check the node. As usual, it needs the file path, which is the location of where you want the GBXML file to be saved, all the zone IDs, and then you can run it. Uh, the reason I use this one versus using the export mask was I wanted to tell you about this option of now that you have this, uh, you can select which zone to be sent for simulation. I think this is cool because, for example, if you're designing a tower or something and you want to run some analysis, like some parametric analysis, you don't want to send the whole building every single time. Maybe you want to select the floor, right? So you can basically go through this list and select the items that you want to be sent. In this example, I send all the nodes, all the, all the zones. But as I said, you, you have like list uh, here. There is a list tab that you can basically select, combine, map. None of them is what I want. I want get 
play them. Bye. Uh, get item at index. Uh, or you can get a rest of items or take items, right? Or you can select the first item. So you can select the zones that you want to be sent and just send them. As I said, it's, it will be really useful in many cases. For file path, uh, we need to use file path node. Here. And, and the way it, I do it, if you don't know, I just type and press enter. And it will be inserted in the center of your canvas here. So now I need to browse to the place that I want this to be saved. Uh, I can do it here next to my dy and file. I can say, uh, and this is important because the name of the of the gbxml file will be the name of your run. So you should name it in a way that you can remember. It. So I can say, what's the link? Um, window to war ratio and 80 and shading is zero. You can add that XML or you can just leave it. We take care of that. But I say I just add it there. So now I connected my file path. The file path is here. This one is here. For run, I need a boolean. Now, if I run this, what should happen is this will export all these zones to this file as an XML file. <coughs> okay, completed. Uh, let's check the report. It says success. So I should have a file there. Let's go check it. Anyway, you don't need to do it, but I want this to show you. Yes. Uh, definitely not here. I saved it in DLL. Oh, I don't know where I saved it. Well done. Uh, here. So this is the XML file. It's one megabyte. And if you open the file, so this is a GBXML file. I don't want to go through the details of the GBXML, but you can see that it, it has the data coming from your, basically geometry from here. That's a core shell and X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z of coordinates and creates all the surfaces and all the stuff. And it has the data about the type of the building. Somewhere, yeah, building type is hospital. So we changed, we didn't change the condition. Like type, we could change that too. All this stuff and you have the unit up here okay the file looks good um, so what I need to do is to update this to the to GBF or what what we call run energy simulation so I bring the run energy analysis node here and you will see it not only needs GBXML path but it needs a project ID so what is this project ID? Uh, project ID comes from uh, how GBS works. So in Green Building uh, Studio, if I go here and sign in to my account, If I remember my password. Okay. So you can see like I have different projects. It calls project name. And inside each project name, I can have a couple of runs for, for my uh, energy models. And you can see high rise XML, for example. Is, is the one that I send. And this X, this name comes from your GBXML file name. So if you want to think about it, uh, you can think about it as like, if you have a project you're running in Revit, for example, I don't know, Tower A. So this folder, you want to name it as Tower A or something. And then there will be an ID for that project. 
which is the project ID that uh, this, this node needs. So where to get that project ID? Uh, so there are different ways, but for this one, wh whenever you create a new project, uh, you have a new ID. So what you can do here, you can make a create new project. It's energy analysis for dynamo run analysis actions, create new project. And what it needs, it takes the name of your project or title of the project and creates an ID and returns an ID. So let's see if my slow Wi-Fi connection help us with this. Uh, so I call it, I don't know, my test, uh, no, let's, let's have better name, because this is, a, this is like the big name, right? Uh, we call it tutorials. And I made a string, I connect it here, now if I run it, if you run, if you create a new project, it returns a project ID if the Wi-Fi connection was me. Here we go. Okay, I wasn't signed in. It asked me to sign in first. Uh, I think I did. Okay, now I'm signed in. It tries to connect to GBS. I keep my fingers crossed. If it didn't work, I just get a better connection. Oh no, it, it did work and it returned me a, a new project ID. So let me show you here. If I refresh tutorial video. So I have a new project already made here. And now I have the project ID. I have my GBXML path so I can run it. What I usually do is just I put this this number in a, because it's not going to change every time. So you don't really need to have this staying here forever. So if you know what is your project ID, 244675, just type it uh, in a code block and then you can remove it. Uh, now I know what you're thinking about. You're thinking, okay, how should I know this number next time I'm coming here? Uh, this is how you can know it. If you go here, uh, again, under energy analysis, there is a get analysis results. And in get analysis results, we have uh, two component, two nodes uh, that helps you find the project IDs and find the, using the project ID, find the run names. Uh, I'm running out of time, so I should finish this pretty soon. Uh, but let me show you this, uh, this one. So I just uh, bring a boolean. I set it to true. Connect it here, and I run it. And now you will see I get all my project IDs, and I have my project names too, so I can match them. So tutorial video is number zero, and is two four four six seven five. So if you come anytime and you have all your projects already ran on GBS, you can use this node to find the to find the ID of the project, and you can use it uh, like uh, to connect it here. If you want to send any run, so you see that we have a project, and then under a project like this, you have different runs. It just uh, you can put it like this: you're, you're designing this thing, this hospital, and you have ten thousand different options. So you make a project which calls hospital, and then you run 10,000 runs under that hospital, which this node is basically what, what returns. So if you have project ID, it gives you access to all the runs. Right now, I have no run, so it will return nothing. But let me run one run here. I just connect the project ID, and then the GBXML path. There is an option here to execute parameter uh, parametric runs. Uh, there is a link here that you can go and read more, and I don't have time right now to talk about it. So for now, I set it to false, so it only runs the analysis for my building, this building that I have. Now, watch here. So I had the number, I connected here. I could select it from this list if I wanted. It doesn't matter, you only just need this number. 
NFS run. And what will happen is it will upload my GBXML file to Gremlin Studio. Again, you know what I think about my, my, my Wi Fi connection. And if it goes well, okay. So now if I open up here and if I go in my tutorial videos, you see like box building something is already uploaded and it's already running. Great. Because I set up the parametric runs off, there is no more run here. If I wasn't, there would be like so many runs <coughs> at the same time. And you see, this is the cool part. So you don't need, you can you can keep using your, your machine for anything that you want, you know, like, and you can, it, now we are sending one, you can send 100. Of, of runs to, to GBS and it's running it on the cloud which, which will be pretty fast. Converting the units because I work in SI, it will write a DOI2 file, it will run the analysis uh, and if you don't know, Green Milling Studio runs on top of DOI2. It, but but uh, there's something nice about it, it generates the energy plus files too, which you can download later and it generates the GBXML files too. Okay, I'm waiting for this run to be done. So I can show you pretty fast how you can read the results. So once I'm done, which is done here, uh, you see this one returns a run ID. Again, I can use the project ID and this node to get the run IDs. It doesn't really matter. This, this, this will be the same number. So having this run ID, which is for, again, I just type it in a 430. To keep it simple, you definitely can connect it, connect this number from that node. Uh, you can use nodes like uh, get analysis result. You can use uh, load analysis result, and then after uh, this one, I will use uh, get uh, energy and carbon cost summary just to show you how it works. I don't need the story that much anymore, so. So if I connect my run ID here, and you see here it asks for parametric run IDs, but we have no parametric run IDs, and why? Because uh, I didn't execute the parametric run. So if I load this, if I run this now, and if my Wi-Fi connection works, I say it every time. So okay, it returns all the data that I need. It returns the results as an object. And says this, it was a hospital. This is the location, and these are these are the input. If you want to know what are the inputs for your model, right now we don't have access to set up these inputs. But uh, like that, that will be something on the next move that let people play with these parts and see like how you can parametrically change the the parameters that you have for fanflow and all that stuff and and run analysis and maybe optimize something with it. But Keep it short here. I just connect results here to this component, to this node. What this node does is basically kind of decompose the results for you and gives you the results for the energy cost, life cycle cost, and all that stuff. So you can see now the numbers, right? Having this, uh, now you are able, th there is actually a really nice open source uh, recently released uh, optimization. Uh, set for, for Dynamo. Now you can see like how you can use this stuff and use the annual energy cost, for example, connect it to that uh, optimization engine and start optimization up to optimizing your geometries or your parameters. Again, we understand this is just like the alpha release. You don't have access to set up many parameters that I know you want to change and I want to change too. Uh, we will definitely do that. And that's coming soon. I hope these videos help you to get it started, especially for people who I know they don't know Dynamo already. And uh, let us know if you have any questions or comments. Um, my, you have our emails. It's easy to find us online, but my email is mrosari at time on um, or or if you want, you can send, uh, okay, this is lessons learned, you know, like if you want it to be a string. So this is mine. We, I think we have core at time from tamthomasadi.com too, that you can send your questions. And we will be really happy to help. Just let us know. Thanks for watching.